I guess what does Beiti mean in Arabic? Beiti is it, it literally translates to my home in Arabic and from from food experience, from a hospitality experience. Um, we, we take a lot of pride in how we conduct hospitality. It's, it's a big thing in Palestine to be as hospitable as possible um, and to always put your guests before anyone else and before yourself first and foremost. So uh, yes, we, we, I guess you can say it's a very homely atmosphere and story from Beiti. On today's episode of Being Muslim, we're going to be traveling to Manchester for one specific reason, and that is Palestinian food. But it's actually not just Palestinian food, we're going to be exploring Palestinian culture, heritage and history as well. We're going to be meeting up with Ali Youssef, uh, he owns a restaurant called Beiti, and it's one of the first Palestinian restaurants in North England, so I'm really, really excited to go and speak to him. He's going to be discussing not just why he loves cooking, but also why it's so important to him to preserve Palestinian heritage and culture as well. Before we get started though, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Islamic Relief. They're one of the largest charity organizations in the world and since being established in 1984, they've helped change the lives of over 120 million people around the world. Right now they're doing a Palestine emergency appeal specifically and they have over 60 members of staff living on the ground in Gaza right now as we speak. They're helping aid those who are affected not just by the recent violence but those who are in desperate need of humanitarian aid as well. So we're adding in the link below, please do check them out. made it to Manchester. I'm gonna go meet Ali at his restaurant and I'm really excited to see what kind of dishes he's prepared for us today. And his restaurant is right here. I'm gonna go meet him now. Yeah, so right now we're in Didsbury. Didsbury Village is a very close-knit community and it's been an absolute pleasure introducing them to Beatty's Cuisine. So what made you want to open up a restaurant? And I guess why Palestinian in particular, not just a Middle Eastern restaurant? The term Middle Eastern, uh, especially when it comes to food, uh, I find is very generic um, mm. and doesn't quite uh, capture uh, flavors uh, accurately. It's important to separate those. My mm. focus has been on Palestinian, obviously due to my heritage. And for me, I hold very highly the way that we produce and, and, and bring out our food exactly like we would in any Palestinian home. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that it's underrepresented, Palestinian food? Absolutely. I mean, when we opened Beatty here in Manchester three years ago, we were the essentially the only Palestinian restaurant outside of London. And within the UK, they really? are a handful. Yes, that's correct. So um, we, we took a, a step uh, into the unknown. Mm -hmm. It's a new cuisine, a new uh, set of flavors and tastes. And we have no idea how people are going to react to it. So it's a big risk for us. I know you wanted to share your culture as well, but why do you feel the need to preserve Palestinian heritage and culture? And why did you choose to do that through food? I think, as, as it's quite known, uh, the Palestinian situation, whether it's uh, food or beyond it, uh, is under threat. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, as, a, uh, as somebody with Palestinian heritage, it's, it's, it's vital that I keep this culture and this tradition alive. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do it is to showcase it uh, and showcase it properly. So for us, we've put our heart and soul into keeping this, these traditions alive, these culinary experiences going, and in fact, making it mainstream. My, my goal is to make Palestinian food known across the UK. Mm -hmm. And the, the fantastic opportunity that we have with Gusto mm -hmm. after winning the Cook Along competition. So you guys uh, won an award? We won an award, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So not too long ago, we were uh, nominated and voted from 15,000 restaurants. Really? And yes. That's and, a really big deal, uh, Our food, Musakhan, is now entering all the homes across the UK. Oh, wow. Um, and for us, that, that's a massive achievement. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's thanks to the team at Gusto for that. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious to know when and where, I guess, your passion for cooking started? Did it start at a young age or was this recent? Yeah, I guess my, my passion for cooking really did start at a young age. My father in particular, um, mm -hmm. You know, he, he's someone that absolutely loves cooking. Um, okay. The smile that's on his face all day while he's cooking. Really? It's, it's one of those smiles that's just, uh, you can't get enough of. Mm -hmm. And you can tell he's so happy, he's in his zone. And I've, I, I wanted to be in that zone. You see someone happy, you want to be yeah. happy too. Yeah. The involvement in, of my family in Beatty has been absolutely crucial um, from day one. From the idea uh, to the building of the shop, all the way to the launch and open. Um, and day-to-day -day operations. My family are involved in recipes, they're involved in supports, 
in encouraging me to take this big step um, when at times it felt a bit too daunting. I could, I could easily, happily say that without their support, I don't think any of this would exist. My mum till this day makes one particular dish on the menu. Despite her having her own job and having her own lifestyle, the efforts of my father, um, when I first opened the restaurant, I struggled to find a chef. And my father stepped up and said, look, I'll take care of it until you sort out a chef. That, that was fantastic, you know, to just sacrifice three very hard months just to keep my restaurant going. That's something that I don't know how I could repay him back for that. Uh, the kunafa recipe that he gave me. And then, of course, I've got my wife who um, has Sorry, who um, despite having um, some health conditions, she's constantly supported me and been patient. So I'm going to tell you about today's dish. Okay. Uh, this is moussakhan. Mm -hmm. Moussakhan is the traditional dish of Palestine. Okay. Um, it's, is it the it's, traditional dish? Or? It's the traditional dish. Okay. It's the number one dish. You, you mm -hmm. want to eat Palestinian, the first thing you think about is moussakhan. Okay. So moussakhan is traditionally made on stone baked bread. Mm -hmm. With soft caramelized onions. Mm -hmm. um, this is onions. This I is onions. Like so that purple cabbage. Oh, absolutely, okay. yes. Yeah. So these onions have been uh, sat uh, and sautéed in olive oil for approximately four to six hours. Oh wow! Um, until they're super soft, you can mm -hmm. literally crush them between your fingers. Mm -hmm. We then add a mixture of spices and some sumac, and that's where you get that lovely sort of okay. uh, color from it. Um, and we layer it on top of this bread. We then put uh, chicken. Again, spiced uh, with some um, moussakhan spices, mm -hmm. and then it's it's baked in the oven. It's a very simple dish to put together, but it's the the, the, the vibrant flavors you get with it, the the, the new tastes, mm -hmm. uh, some mac. And it's that purple um, one there. It's that, that one there exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So some mac is a berry traditionally. Okay, so it's um, a bit sour, right? It's, it's tangy and zesty, mm -hmm. so it, it's it's almost got a hint of lemon within it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see you make this. Then. Absolutely, yeah. to see the finished product. So once you've got the onions on, is it just... Once chicken? you've got the onions on, oh, you move over. Just sprinkle of some mark. And it's about the quantity. You don't want to overdo it. And this then goes into the oven. So this is the finished product. That is the finished Mashallah, product. It's so pretty. So, but what makes this really Palestinian, in your opinion? Mm -hmm. We have the sum mark. Mm -hmm. We have the onions caramelized in olive oil mm -hmm. and the uh, moussaka and spices on the chicken. Mm -hmm. Those three marry very well together. The sweetness of the onions with the savory of the chicken. Mm -hmm. And it's a very sort of tear and share dish. So this, this is the real Palestine. This is the real Palestine. Yeah. That's it. Unedited as it as you'd get mm -hmm. it in Palestine. Mm -hmm. So what we're making now is mm -hmm. the Gazan sea bream. Okay. We're gonna use the sauce that we made earlier to cover this uh -huh. sea bream here. Mm -hmm. So here we are, we've got some onions on the fire now uh, with some olive oil. We're gonna slowly add in all the ingredients. We start off with the wet ingredients, the onions, the tomatoes, the lime juice, and then we slowly start to move on to the dry ones like the chilies and the coriander. Okay, and you're calling it a gazan dish. Correct. So what makes it gazan? So we are, what we try and do at Beta, we showcase uh, different um, styles of cooking across mm -hmm. different regions. So albeit Palestine is quite a small country, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of variety from village to village and city to city. Yeah. So the Gaza Strip have their own style of cooking. Mm -hmm. They tend to eat foods that are maybe spicier than what you'd get in really? the West Bank or okay. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So we are showcasing that side of it. There's, there's more chili incorporated in this, there's lime, there's there's, there's various uh, combinations of flavors you might not find in the rest of Palestine. Mm -hmm. And with it being the sea bream, Gaza has a coast. Mm -hmm. So obviously um, to them, seafood, seafood, it's a lot more incorporated mm -hmm. into their diet. Okay. And here we are. The Gaza bream sauce. So all the flavors are infused, the spicy kick, the, uh, the lime juice and the onions. Now we're just going to place it on top of the fish. So now we're all ready to go. It's going to go straight into the oven and then we'll let it bake there. So here we are. The fish has finally come out of the product. oven. That's it. And then you finish it with lime? Finish it top. with lime. Lime juice. Oh, that's so beautiful. And there we are. Gars and Seabream complete. Okay, so what is this? So this is kunafa. This is the dessert this that you wanted dessert. to share yep. with us? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
Oh wow, that color is so pretty. Oh, now we've got some rose syrup. Mm -hmm. So there's no actual sweetness in the kunaf itself, it all comes from the syrup. Really? And we top it with pistachios. So why kunafa in particular? Why did you choose this out of any dessert that you could have made? So kunafa is actually um, a produce of my hometown, Nablus, in okay. uh, Palestine. Um, and um, everybody in Palestine, well, when they think of kunafa immediately, it's, mm -hmm. it's Nablus. So it's something that's passed down generations um, mm -hmm. within families that live there. Um, I guess on my visits um, uh, several years back, uh, when I arrived in Nablus for the first time um, to meet uh, relatives that I've never met in my life before. Mm -hmm. I arrived in the morning, the first thing that I was given to eat was kunafa. Really? So it was kunafa for breakfast mm -hmm. and that has just never left my mind. Yeah. Um, is I'm it a secret recipe? Here. Is that why you didn't it show It is indeed. Anything? That's why we didn't have any preps in there. <laughs> so even the staff that work here, mm -hmm. um, they're not aware of what goes really? into it. It's so a it's secret only you family and recipe. Dad. Correct. And even the cheese that's inside of it. Yeah. That's a secret. It's the cheese that really is the secret. The pastry is the pastry, you can get it mm -hmm. from anywhere, but it's what it's filled with, um, the quality and the choice of cheese. And I know you, you give back a lot to the community as well through charity. Can you explain a little bit about that? We made a sort of pledge to ourselves that um, as we progress within Beatty, mm -hmm. um, we will always give back to the community because we came from that community. So for us, we've, we've worked with a number of organizations, charities, some local and some international. And our recent work has been uh, with Islamic Relief mm -hmm. on uh, a particular campaign of Palestinian education uh, okay. and healthcare. Mm -hmm. So we're working hand in hand, um, producing food and recipe boxes that we sell, and mm -hmm. of which the proceeds would then go to these projects. Oh, and the, the, the team at Islamic Relief have, have, have been nothing short of fantastic. Mm -hmm. they, they really have helped us Actually, and we've helped them back, mm -hmm. yeah. There are a lot of definitions um, and kind of negative stereotypes, not just about Arabs and not just about Muslims, but about Palestinians as well, unfortunately. But what makes you proud to be Palestinian today? For me, uh, the history and traditions of Palestine, uh, I believe once understood, mm -hmm. will intrigue anybody mm -hmm. to, to want to learn more about it. Palestine, um, whether it's people or land or food, has affected all four corners of the globe. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's been the, the hub and the capital of the world for, for in terms of trade, in terms mm -hmm. of people movement, in terms of empires that have come and gone. And with that came along different ingredients, different people, different heritage. You will find all mixes and all creeds and all races uh, within Palestinian communities. Mm -hmm. um, and you will find ingredients that don't actually uh, linked to Palestine but are now entrenched in its cuisine mm -hmm. and that's from the influences that we've got whether it's from ports or visiting as, 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 as tourists. Mm -hmm. For me the dishes that I've showed you today are three of my best dishes. They're the dishes that all my pride and effort and energy go into um, into creating. Mm -hmm. um, the Musakhan for me is the traditional dish of Palestine and it's important to recognize such. Um, it's the dish that um, all Palestinians will eat on the special occasions. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's, 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 it's got a very high status uh, in our culinary heritage. The second is the Gazan sea bream. Mm -hmm. And for me, that represents the regional differences within the small uh, uh, areas of Palestine. So the Gazan sea bream has incorporated different spices, different levels of chili, um, seafood, and has brought in a completely different, essentially a culinary culture. Mm -hmm. but that's within the Palestinian territory. And it's also showcasing food from the blockaded Gaza Strip that often is, is not looked into and not many people know about. Uh, and the third dish uh, is the kunafa. Mm -hmm. As a dessert, kunafa again is close to me because it was the first dish I had when I went to Nablus, mm -hmm. my home city. And for me, it's, it's something that um, my father taught me uh, and, 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 and and swore me to secrecy, essentially, <laughs> with this dish. So I find it uh, uh, not just uh, enjoyable to make, but it's also an honor to be able to make that mm -hmm. recipe and, and, and give it for people to try. So we've just spent the day with Ali, and I feel like I've relearned a lot about what I thought I knew about Palestine and about food in general. And I think Ali has really shown us that although food can seem like it's such a trivial thing, it actually has a very deep connection to one's feeling of nostalgia for family and for homeland as well. 
I think by appreciating where all these ingredients and recipes are coming from, we're learning not just about culture, but about the land, the history, the culinary heritage of the people. And I think that's really, really important for all of us to take away from as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Being Muslim. Please let us know what you thought about in the comments below. Uh, one more shout out to our sponsor, Islamic Relief. We're adding in the link below to their website, so please be sure to check them out.